Welcome everyone, D. Dijkstra here giving you another quick little calculus math lesson and this time it's on optimization. Awesome. All right, so here we go. So here we have a problem that states a manufacturer wants to design an open box having a square base and a surface area of 108 square inches. What dimensions will produce a box with a maximum volume. So we have a maximum volume that they want. So again, let's review some of the strategies we can have here to solve uh, these optimization problems. One is we want to draw a picture. So you read through the material and you adjust it and you think, okay, well, what's happening here? And then we can draw a picture. So what I've got here is here's my box. And it says that it has a square base, so I know that the dimensions on the bottom are going to be x by x because it's a square. Now, it didn't say that it's a cube, so that would change things because that means the height as well as the width and the length would all be the same. In this case, I have a variable height, so I want to uh, understand that going forward, that this h is different than these two x's, which is good because now we're only dealing with a volume that is an x squared and an h as opposed to a length times width times the height. So we have three variables, which makes the problem a little bit more difficult. So we draw a picture to reference what, the, what they're asking us about. Step two, in my opinion, is identify some key information. For instance, what is the shape? Is it a cone? Is it a circle? Is it a cylinder? In this case, it's a box, and we're increasing the box size. Shape, what are we finding the maximum and minimum of? Right? What did they ask us to find the maximum or minimum of? And then are there two equations? Most of these problems, you're always going to have to have two equations, one that will give you some precise information where you can eliminate one of the variables and then substitute it into the other equation to get that. All right, so we have here. Um, did they give you anything to eliminate a variable, right? Did they give us anything to eliminate the variable? Now, in, th in this case, we'll look and see if they did. Um, so let's go with what we have so far. Let's read again what the story says. It says, a manufacturer, I just didn't write it all the way out. A manufacturer wants to design an open box having a square base, having a square base and a surface area of 108 square inches, what dimensions will produce a box with a maximum volume? So an open box, meaning the top is open, there's nothing there. So we have a side, 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 four sides. The top is open, square base. They did give us a surface area. Well, that's nice. And so I underlined that. Square base, I underline that, that's pretty important. And then you've got a maximum volume. Now, did they give us the, the, the volume equation for a box? No. Did they give us the surface area for the equation of the box? No. So uh, they didn't give us much. Th these, that's why these problems are a lot of intuition. You have to know some things going in before you're able to solve the problem. So let's look at the next step. They did give us something that we can eliminate. Utilize two equations to make one differentiable equation. All right, so we're going to look at these two different equations. An equation with one variable. So what we want is that one equation with one variable. All right, so let's proceed there now. If we look at this, um, we will notice that, let's square this up a bit. We have an equation here, which is volume is equal to x squared times h. Now, we could, that's one equation. Now we have to develop a secondary equation. Well, they gave us this surface area of 108 square inches. So I'm going to use that. And you'll notice that surface area is equal to what? Well, it's equal to the area of the base, right? Here's our base, plus area of the four different sides, four sides around the box, four sides, one, two, three, four, right? The two sides in the front and the back. 
And then normally service area would also include the top of the box, but they didn't ask for it. They said an open box. So that means we have a, the, no lid or no top to it. So what we do is they gave us this. So this is our equation that we're going to use to substitute in. How do I know that? Because this is the equation that we're going to use to go down and eliminate one of the two variables. Then we'll substitute that into our volume. And then this is the equation that we're going to ultimately take the derivative of because we're finding a maximum of a volume. So there's our hint. This is the one we're going to do the derivative of. And these, this is the equation that we're going to use to substitute in. So what do we do? We put 108 is equal to x squared plus 4xh, right? Because x squared is the area of the base. 4 times x times h, because there's four sides. And x times h, that's the x times h, that's the area of the side. And if I want to solve for h, I take 108, you subtract the x squared, and then divide by 4x. And so we get h is equal to 108 equals 108 minus x squared divided by 4x is equal to h. OK. So now, what do we do with that? Well, we're going to plug that in to our equation here. So now we'll take v is equal to x squared, right? our original equation, x squared, times 108 minus x squared, 4x. Now remember, this x squared and that x squared, they don't cancel out. Got to do some algebra. So what we can do, though, is we can simplify. We can simplify one of these x's with that x. So we get x divided by 4 there. We get 108 minus x squared. Then now what I can do is I can distribute this x accordingly. So if I distribute that, I'll get volume is equal to 108x over 4 minus x cubed over 4. And then I can simplify those. 4 goes into 108, 27x minus x cubed divided by 4. Now, up until that point, so this is your final volume equation, right? That is your final volume equation. Only algebra. I haven't even done the calculus yet. So that's why we need to keep that in mind, is I haven't even done calculus. All I've done is simply simplify all of the uh, pieces to get it to where I can take the first derivative. So now we take the first derivative. V prime is equal to 27, right? There's only one x. 27 minus 3, bring it down. Reduce the power squared over 4. So 27 minus 3x squared over 4. Now I have that. What do we do next? Well, let's go back and see what we have to do on our list. Substitute one of the equations into the equation to be maximized or minimized. We did that, right? We just did that. Take the first derivative and find critical values. Well, if you recall, uh, first derivative and finding critical values means we have to set that derivative, first derivative, equal to 0. Find the two numbers or the one number. And then once we have that, we contest for concavity to make sure we have a max or a min. And then 6 solve for any missing variables that we have left. All right, let's do that now. Here we go. Set v prime of x equal to 0. 27 minus 3x squared over 4 equals 0. And you can see that if we uh, subtract the 27, divide by negative 1, and then 4, 4 times 27 is 108. Divide by 3, we get x squared is equal to 36. If we take the square root of both sides, right? If we take the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to plus or minus 6. Well, now what we have to do is figure out, well, which one do we use, the positive or the negative? Well, mostly, we would think we're not going to use the negative value because we don't want a negative volume. That wouldn't be very good. But we need to prove it. Right? The one reason we want to be careful of this is because that negative 6 back into our normal function, our volume function, our x is squared. Right? So if it gets squared, then that means it could be, it'll be a positive number regardless. However, that's why we have the little second derivative, right? So we can use the second derivative. We recall 
f double prime of x, if it's less than zero, it's a max. And if f double prime of x is greater than zero, then we have a minimum. So we find f double, or v double prime of x, which is negative 6x to the fourth. We just take 2, bring it down, that's 6, and over 4, which reduces to negative 3x over 2. And now, if I plug in negative 6, a negative times a negative will be a positive result, which means negative 6 will produce a minimum value. Positive 6 will produce a negative, because if I put 6 in here, that's a negative value, and we get a maximum. So x equals 6 is our value for x. We substitute that back into the equation. We want 108 minus x squared. x squared is 36 divided by 4 times x. So 108 minus 36 divided by 24 is h, and that is 3. And so now we have the dimensions of what they requested. The dimensions that will produce a maximum volume for the box is when x is equal to 6 and when it, and the height is equal to 3. All right. Hope you uh, enjoyed that. Learned a lot. Thank you, Mr. D. Have a great time. Appreciate it. Have a great day. See you soon.